Well, good morning and uh, welcome to Oxnard. Uh, it's thrilling for me to be here, Brian. So what actually drew you into the, the field of cancer surgery and made you devote your life to ending cancer? Well, when I was a surgical resident, um, my experience, and I think I bet yours too, Brian, was that the most interesting cases were the cancer cases. They were all different and they were all technically challenging in different ways. And the technical aspects of how you did the surgery influenced the outcome um, over time. So it was really, from that standpoint, super interesting. And the second thing is that the biology uh, of cancer was so amazing, so understood with no real insight. Uh, and so I realized that we needed to find different ways and that this was a field that married a lot of uncertainty, lots of opportunity to uncover mysteries of biology with the technical aspects of doing high-end surgery. And that fusion is really what drew me to the field. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I think there's another component of it though, and that's the relationships that you get to build with your patients. I think a lot of times in the world of surgery, and maybe particularly some aspects of, of ENT surgery, which is my background, yes. you're solving a discrete problem, right? And so someone comes to you and you take tonsils out, you do you know whatever is needed, and then they go back to primary care and then you know, the patients sort of go on their way. But it was the long-term relationships that, that thankfully we're having more and more of, yes. right, you know, with patients that, you know, I saw my attendings, you know, asking about children that now had children of their own. And, and it was, that was really um, impactful and meaningful. And some, you know, I am relationship driven. And I think that was the, the, really the siren song for me. Three, two, one. <laughs> Looking at the cancer network and particularly the, the partnership with Auction Health, what do you want to see um, down the road for the network and you know in our particular relationship? We're so excited about this partnership because we see all the strengths that Auction brings to the partnership. And we really believe that this partnership may turn out to be one of the best that we've ever created. And as we learn from the experience of working with you, we want to take lessons from that as we build the network at larger scale across the country. One of the goals that we have is to build a national clinical trials network. Mm -hmm. And as we open up trials in multiple sites, including New Orleans, we want to enroll more diverse populations over a shorter period of time. That enables us to take the time from the first patient enrollment to the last patient enrollment and take it from years and turn it into months. And when we can open and close a trial in a matter of six months and then get on to the next question mm -hmm. six months from now, we can accelerate the pace of discovery uh, for the benefit of patients around the world. We know what, what benefits our patients, our health system, our state gets from this partnership. What is the, the benefit for, for MD Anderson? As we expand and we build productive, enhanced relationships like this one with Oshner, we know that we can bring the same level of care to this community over time. If we scale that up in multiple communities across America, we will really elevate the standard of care across the country, and we will increase our ability to enroll diverse populations in clinical trials, which is very, very important to us. You know, I understand that we have always prided ourselves on our ability to, to enroll diverse patient populations in our clinical trials, and I think a, having a, a broader menu uh, of those trials, including the you know the early phase ones that, that we've been doing for several years, but I think expanding that right. uh, is is going to benefit patients across the world. You know, we, we've reflected on this uh, or described this partnership as really an afterburner for the work that that we're doing. You know, with an Air Force background, I, I'm scared to death of flying, but you know, when I particularly when I was deployed, I lived, we stayed right next to the uh, the runway at Bagram. See the, the jets take off and then hit afterburner. It's just you know they're already moving fast, and, and to see that that acceleration is amazing. And, and this is that for us from a clinical trial standpoint. Yes, it's a game-changing deal for us. I mean, you've described it last night, and, I, and I, I'm going to use your word liberally, but it is transformative. It's a transformative relationship for for cancer patients at Auctioner and truly cancer patients in Louisiana. reached almost the pinnacle of, of 
cancer care leadership in, you know, in the United States. And what, what would you say to someone that's just embarking on their medical career uh, about the benefits and, of going into cancer care? Well, this is uh, one of the most exciting times uh, in the evolution of oncology because you have a complete shift in the way that new drug discovery occurs. You have advancements in technology like robotic surgery. Uh, we have the fusion of artificial intelligence into medicine. And so there's never been an era like this era. I'm convinced that the next 10 years will be unlike any other 10 year period that you and I have experienced. So we need people who come into medicine uh, with curiosity. Mm -hmm. And we have an opportunity to bring people into medicine who have compassion and empathy. No, I, I agree, that's a, that's a wonderful take on it. I mean, I, I see this being a more mission-driven um, individual now. Not that we always haven't been you know, focused on, on helping others, but um, because the, the knowledge is really at your fingertips. That's because, right. You know, uh, uh, and because there are such, I think, rapid connections now between what happens in the lab and how that quickly translates into you know, improving the human right. condition, right? We saw that with COVID. We've seen that, um, you know, I know Jim Allison worked for years and years on, you know, uh, around the T cell, the, biology. T cell biology and, you know, the immune system and its role in cancer. But to see that rapidly translate into effective therapies that have then, you know, um, um, logarithmically expanded into what we're doing and changed the, you know, change the landscape. So it, it, it attracts or it should attract folks, not just into the clinical realm, but into the labs, into the basic translational uh, sciences. Um, but getting back to that mission point, you know, then that's one of the things that drives us, right? So when we recruit, we recruit for excellence, but we also recruit for who believes in our mission. Right. And then who uh, truly believes in the community and in making the communities better. So it, it, it does stand to bring that more empathic, the more person-focused uh, student into the game. So it, it's exciting to see where this is going to go. And there will always be a role for, for the physician in this. No question about that. I think physicians will be in different kinds of roles uh, uh, in the future. If you look at certain fields in medicine, uh, for example, pathology and radiology are pattern recognition fields. Mm -hmm. And pattern recognition can be done using machine learning and artificial intelligence. So I don't mean to suggest that pathologists and radiologists won't be needed, but they'll be doing different kinds of work. Uh, they'll be designing the algorithms and checking uh, the work that machine learning tools do to read scans. Right. And I think the nature of the doctor-patient relationship will change somewhat in that physicians will be almost like, like we do in, in leadership, right? You're, they're sort of providing care at scale, right? They're, they'll be That's right. uh, monitoring a multitude of patients at, you know, at one time and so trying to find that art of making those personal connections and, and, and humanizing that even if you're not directly in front of someone for you know for 15 minutes or an hour or whatever the you know whatever the appointment requires is going to be a, it's interesting to see how that plays out but that'll be an interesting that'll be a, I think a key component of it. Well I think that um, increasingly we're going to have uh, advanced abilities to make a diagnosis using other tools and the physician's role will be to explain the treatment options in an understandable way to the patients. You're right I think that the communication piece will be essential. I mean, you, you are candidly uh, and, and a very effective communicator. Your ability to, to uh, uh, translate your ideas into something that's readily uh, understood, uh, even by a Luddite like me, is, is, uh, <laughs> uh, has been impressive just in the short time that, that we've spent together. But that, that's been a piece that, that I don't think we have focused enough on over the years in medical education. So the, the ability to communicate, to translate, if you will, the complexities of the work that we do to patients so that they have a, an, an appropriate or enhanced understanding of it will be an essential part of a, a student curriculum going forward. You know, I, we have such a wonderful team here and it's been just a, an honor uh, to to have been given the opportunity to represent them and, and, and advocate for them and, and really try to get them the things that they need and then get out yes. of the way, right? I mean, it's, it's um, if you look at some of the programs that we've started over the years, our phase one clinical trials program, our bone marrow transplant program, I mean, it's such 
such a, a wealth of talent there. Our surgical oncology group across the, the different subsites is, is fantastic. And you know, we have a legacy of great cancer care, but we want to leave a great legacy of cancer care. And I think this partnership is a, is a key um, um, tool to make that, you know, make that happen. We agree. When we see the remarkable clinical strengths that are here, we see the incredible potential, the commitment to education, the community focus, and you couple that with the evolution of our network, the single partnership model that we have, and the proximity between Houston and New Orleans, I think there's amazing potential. Yeah, we are very excited. I mean, this is a, it's a big day for Oxford Health. It's a big day um, for our teams, and it's a, it's a huge day for our patients in Louisiana. So thank you for your time. Delighted to be here. Enjoy it. <laughs>